Obviously, Fujifilm have a few very, very nice tele zoom lenses, even the XC50 to 230 is a very tempting little budget number. Then you've got the 55 to 200, you've got a 50 to 140. But I thought I would get something to play with. As you know, I've used some of my Canon lenses on the Fujifilm using the Fringer, Fringer EFFX Pro. So now we've got this Canon EFS 55 to 250 S. TM and I'm looking forward to using this and I'm thinking if you already own the Fringer Fringer or you're coming from Canon and you own this lens and you're moving to Fujifilm I think this could be at least for us a better choice than the XC lens and maybe arguably maybe not the 55 to 200 but definitely for me it was between the xc 50 to 230 because i wanted that 230 i wanted to go beyond 200 on the cheap just for some knocking about the house lockdown bird shooting whatever i don't know actually that reminds me i need to put up <laughs> the bird feeder the last one was okay but i only got these to fat pigeons anyway we digress we're going to take a look at how this performs if you haven't already skipped the intro already and see if it was worth even the whole 138 pounds that i paid on ebay also it came basically mint with the hood which i've got knocking about here somewhere the et 63 hood and it even had a filter on it decent let's crack on then This is the setup then, the X-T4 that you know well enough by now and the lens up close complete with the hood that I got with it and of course we're getting an 82.5 to 357mm FX equivalent f4 to 5.6, a minimum focus distance of 85 centimeters. it weighs 573 grams with the fringer and the hood included, 309 on Amazon at the moment but on a second-hand market, you can find them for around 100 to 140 And I have seen them in the past go for about £80, but I missed out and paid 138 delivered for this mint copy with the hood and the filter. The previous clip and the next clip were shot from a kitchen window, so bear that in mind. I'm happy anyway, spying on the nature in my own back garden at least. Let's just repeat for the latecomers, I'm not suggesting that this is a complete alternative to a native Fujifilm lens, but if you already own the Fringer adapter and you just want something with decent reach for a bit of fun, you won't go far wrong with something like this. Now all the samples in this, honestly, a little bit long video are unedited, give or take a few video clips which have been adjusted a touch just for exposure. And I'm going to throw in the autofocus test that you normally see in these videos on their own. I'm going to throw them in in the timeline as it happened, 
Now everything was handheld to test how well the lens IS and XT4 IBIS work together, even when you're crouching down awkwardly shooting a sleepy cat in the park. At 634 grams, the combo balances nicely on the X-T4. Even though at 250, you'll have really extended the overall size and the tough plastic nature of this, well, it's all good for what I need, but I appreciate some fanboys and fangirls aren't into that. It's also not weather sealed, so buyer beware. But remember, you're getting up to 357 mil equivalent at F5.6 for peanuts. What more do you expect? I mean, pretty much most of the time I use this lens at its longest anyway. Now I've included some live clips shooting from the widest 55 mil to the longest so you can see exactly how it performs on the go. Now it's not particularly how I'd usually show the clips. It's not a finished product clip. The zooming, you know, isn't at that level as well as the stepping of the system, but it gives you an idea of how well the lens responds to those kind of changes on the go. In good light then, the lens performs really well. As you know, I usually just throw up straightforward autofocus tests with my Canon lenses and Fringer combo, but I just fancied having a bit more fun with it on this video, and so it's all in the mix and in the same order I shot the samples with. Overall, the autofocus performs really, really well. It's fast, it's accurate, and for me, very usable. Of course, you'll need to recognize the limits of the scene you're working in. It's not a pro lens by a long shot when it comes to the aperture, for example. But the Fringer, even this version one, keeps everything working nicely with the Fujifilm body. For catching creatures outdoors in the back garden or through the kitchen window, as you saw before with the bees and the grey cat shots, I think this works an absolute treat. But... At the end of the day, it all comes down to image quality. So let's look at some of my favorite shots from the day or two of shooting these random samples and have a little chat about the image quality after that. Hopefully you've already seen just how impressive this lens performs when it comes to the all-important IQ. It's as sharp as you'll need it to be. Remember there was no editing applied to the images that you saw and the details, I think you'll, they're spot on. <laughs> There's a final batch of samples to come with some more autofocus tests thrown in, which can testify to that though, if you're still not convinced about the IQ. It definitely seems sharp across the whole frame from wide open through. I mean, wide isn't particularly wide with this, what, 55 F4? Anyway, there's no noticeable issues with distortion and chromatic aberration either. There is a little shading, vignetting, 
on your way up to F8, but it's nothing major. Honestly, I don't want to go too crazy, and you know I'm not a pixel peeper. This is a very impressive lens, dare I say it, for the price. I just want even more reach than this now, and you'll see why at the end of this final short clip. I still use my Canon EFS 10 to 18 mil STM with the fringe adapter, as you'll have seen in some of my recent videos, and occasionally my 50 mil STM too. Not because they're better than the Fujifilm native options or closest equivalents, but because I already owned them from when I used the Canon 80D for this channel. And well, waste not want not, as we say here. They all perform really well and can produce solid results. Now, of course, if you don't already own the Fringer, unless you get a really good price for one, and the Canon lenses you want to use, then it might not be for you, and you're probably, they're probably not even here, those people, are they? <laughs> now, one lens that's super tempting is the Sigma 18-35 to f1.8. I really want to try it out with this adapter, but if I'm honest, it's kind of large for what I'd want to do with it. I think I'll stick with my ST lenses for now though until that chance comes along. Maybe I'll be blown away so much that I want to use it in the pro work. Now this Fringer Pro is 249 on Amazon right now and that's the version 1 that I own. The Canon lens is 309 brand new on the same site. So that's cheaper than the nearest native equivalent, the XF55-200 to which is 615 right now. And I'm not saying you should go that route. The Fujifilm is a solid performer. It's a touch brighter. It weighs a whole seven grams more than the Canon and Fringer combo and hood. It suffers a little bit from pink cushion distortion if you want to be critical. And the focal length is 50 mil or 75 mil full frame equivalent shorter than this combo, which for me matters. Compared to the XC lens though, which does have a closer telephoto range, if you already own the Fringer, go the combo route. If you don't own the Fringer, and that extra 20 mil isn't important, then go native again. In the end though, this combo is really fun and very rewarding, and this video is now too long. For the record, this combo works really well on my X-T3 as well. Although, of course, I really appreciate the Ibis of the T4 when I'm out and about. So it's over to you. Let us know in the comments below how you get on or if you have used any other Canon lenses with your Fujifilm camera. We want to hear from you. But first, don't forget to subscribe. That way I can keep making these videos and get hold of some extra cool bits and pieces too. Anyway, take it easy. Stay safe. and. See you very soon.